If there was a global leaderboard for horror movies watched, I imagine I would be in the top 50. And I say that sincerely. I think I have seen more horror movies than most people have seen movies in their entire lifetime. It's a genre that I am so passionate about because it's almost exclusively awful films. And by now all of you know that I love bad movies. So bad they're good. I find them to be highly entertaining to just watch something that is objectively trash but in an entertaining way. So that means that I am constantly consuming horror films. Because bad movies and horror go together like cereal and milk. It's almost more impressive just how consistently terrible this genre is. It's just saturated with the worst throwaway garbage imaginable. Just this stinky pile of dog shit for horror films that come out in recent years. Now it's not all of them. There are some bangers out there, some diamonds in the rough for sure. But 99% of horror movies that come out are just not good. And I've seen like 99% of horror movies. So last night I was just going through this big rant about like Blumhouse just pumping out trash as well as like a couple of horror movies that I really like like Hereditary and Martyrs. So it was this mixed bag of just ranting about horror as a genre in general and I just wanted to show you all of that real quick because I have seen more horror movies than I imagine most people in the world have. Movies you've never even heard of, I have seen. In fact, my least favorite movie of all time is a horror film that I bet zero of you have ever heard of past the times I've mentioned it over the years. It's called Let's Be Evil. And the only thing scary about this film is when you recognize that your time was wasted and you were directly insulted by sitting down to pop this piece of shit on the television screen. It's... it's a movie about nothing, really. Like, when Squidward goes to that empty dimension to be all alone, there was more going on in that void than there was throughout the runtime of Let's Be Evil. The plot is supposed to be like these smart kids are in a bunker and then they decide to kill their babysitters, and that's like the, the scariness of it, but it, like that barely even really happens in the film. It's actually just these tedious chores that you witness with some kids solving like fucking three-dimensional Rubik's Cubes. It's so lame. It is indescribable how bad this film is. It's not fun bad or anything at all. It is actually one of the most miserable movies you can ever really watch. So, point is, I've seen movies in this genre that no one else has ever even heard of. This went on Netflix in like 2016, and I'm pretty sure it was taken off within the same year because I doubt anyone was watching it. I don't know if it's still there or not, but that would be my guess. I, if, if, if I made this movie, I would be doing everything in my power to scrub its existence from the files. I'd be erasing it like that planet the clones were made on in the Star Wars prequel trilogy. I would be trying to scrub this from the fucking archives. It is that bad. But anyway, let me just go ahead and show you this full rant. Before getting into it though, I do want to just shout out Plague Seeker one more time. This is my newest comic series. Issue 1 just dropped. It is 80 beautiful pages of carnage, a wonderful story. And just the best art you'll ever see in your goddamn life. So Plague Seeker issue 1 is out right now. You can find it at badegg.co. I'll put a link to it in the description. Pick, a, pick, pick up a copy of this bad boy. Do it for me, huh? L take on Blumhouse. Brother, look at the... What? What take? They pump out some of the worst movies because it's going to make them money no matter what. Because the budgets are so small. What do you mean? Look at this list of almost nothing but stinkers over the last couple of, over the last couple of years, except for I think it's Black Phone, Five Nights at Freddy's, and they had one more that wasn't absolute abominable dog shit, and I can't recall off the top of my head over the last three years. So imaginary dog shit, night swim, super dog shit, five nights at Freddy's, fine. Exorcist Believer, dog shit, totally killer, probably three people saw that movie, so I'm imagining dog shit. Passenger, dog shit, Insidious Red Door, super dog shit, Unseen, I didn't see that one, so I don't know. There's something wrong with the children, looks like dog shit. Sick, I think I saw that one, probably dog shit, also came out in, in January, so most likely dog shit. Megan, good, Nanny, dog shit. I don't think I saw Soft and Quiet. I didn't see that. Halloween Ends, super dog shit. The Visitor, super dog shit. And every single one of these movies has such a low budget that no matter how bad it is, it's going to make its move its money back. Well, actually, Imaginary has a higher budget than almost all of their films combined. Their VFX team went crazy on those awful monster designs, I guess. But it's usually like one to two million dollars, two to three million dollars. Jesus Christ. How did Night Swim have a budget of 15 mil? 
No, no, what? That movie was shot in two locations. That's it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's high, That's gotta be some kind of tax fraud write-off type deal. That is not a $15 million budget movie. They didn't even use VFX, really. I don't know where that money could have even gone. Maybe they're counting in marketing budget, because it wasn't, like, highly marketed. But, I mean, look at the box office. These all make a killing, even though they're legitimately terrible. I don't know why more people don't... I've said this a million times. I don't know why more studios don't do what Blumhouse does. Just make cheap horror movies and pump them out. They will always, always, always turn a profit. Always. Go up to their early movies. They're capable of quality. They're capable of quality, absolutely. They fund some really good stuff. Like uh, Invisible Man, I thought was a banger. Megan, I also liked. Like, even in recent times. It's not like they can't make good movies. It's just that they normally don't because they don't need to. So they don't, they don't bother funding something that's going to be expensive and somewhat of a gamble. Jesus Christ, even Truth or Dare. Even Truth or Dare. The $3 million budget, $95 million box office. Oh my God, even Truth or Dare. That's crazy. See, like, they don't miss. They can't miss. These things are so fucking cheap, and yet they always can turn such a huge profit for no reason. Oh my God, even Unfriended. Unfriended. Million dollar budget, $16 million box office. This would be a box office disaster for every other studio in the world except Blumhouse. This is a 16x return on investment. I don't know why more studios don't do it. I'll never understand why more studios don't do it. Oh my god, Ouija Origin of Evil. Fuck, this movie was terrible. $81 million box office. They can't not make oodles of cash. No, I still haven't seen Sinister. That's one of those movies I want to watch. I've heard nothing but good things about Sinister, but I've never seen it. Apparently the sequel's terrible, but I've never seen the first one, and then everyone praises it. So I want to watch it. I just can't imagine this movie, like, actually being scary. There's only, like, two movies I've ever seen that I would actually consider, like, unnerving to me to the point where, like, I was like, damn, that was pretty, that was a pretty startling experience. Hereditary, which I think is the best modern horror movie up until the last ten minutes where it just becomes generic horror schlock, and Martyrs, which I just mentioned. I don't even know if I can type this in on YouTube and have it be terms of service compliant because this movie is so extreme. This movie, I legitimately think is one of the most disturbing films ever made. Elvis the Alien made the mo uh, video on it, and he covers it. And he doesn't even quite capture everything about it that makes it so powerful. It's a French film, right? Yeah, so it's part of a genre called extreme... Extreme New Age French... Or extreme... Fuck, what the... It's been a while since I've gone over Martyrs. But it's like extreme French something is the category, and it is haunting. Like, it's not a movie that's just shock for the sake of shock, like some of that dog shit, like, Serbian film. This is a movie that has such a deeply profound story with incredible acting and, like, a really thought-provoking message to it. Like I mentioned, it's a movie that I still actively think about from time to time. It was... It was a lot. Like, at first I didn't quite grasp it, I guess, fully when I watched it, but the more that I, like, sat on it, the more I was like, damn, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's so hard to watch. It is legitimately hard to watch, yeah. Martyrs is the best movie that I don't recommend to people. Yeah, I, I could never in good faith recommend this to anybody, because it is a lot. Is it scary? Like, horrific. It, there's no jump scares, or well, actually, there's like two jump scares, but it's not that kind of horror. It's like a very psychological, very hard to look at kind of horror. It's disturbing, and it's known mainly for its gore. It was weak sauce, to be honest. Now, imaginary is scary. True, this guy, this has got nothing on imaginary. You're so fucking right. Yeah. Have you seen the autopsy of Jane Doe? Super creepy. I think I saw that one a while ago. Is that the one from 2016? 2017? Had a lot of hype online. Because there was one of those, like, Autopsy of Jane Doe, the possessing of Lily Manchester, the possession of Grim Cheeseburger. Like, I've seen all of those, and they sucked ass. So if it was during that wave, then yeah, I probably saw it and didn't like it. This was during that exact wave I was talking about, like, the, t the taking of uh, Deborah Logan, the uh, fucking... The haunting of 
Sally Bacon Ranch. Like, uh, it was, like, all of these movies were pretty much the fucking same thing. Another, like, classic that I haven't seen outside of Sinister is It Follows. I never saw that one. And yeah, we already went over the Puniverse. We were just talking about that a little bit ago. Barbarian was pretty good. I like Barbarian. Thanks for your snowman. Have you ever done a horror movie tier list? It might be a fun stream idea. That is a pretty good stream idea, actually. I'm gonna write that down. That's not a bad idea at all. It'd be kind of nice, because I saw every single horror movie that ever hit streaming services from 20... I think it was, like, from 2015 to 2017. So, like, anything that was released during that period, I saw every single horror movie. So I've got a catalog of some of the dumbest shit none of you have ever heard of. So that's a pretty good idea. Maybe I will do that. Martyrs is tor torture porn. It's not, though. That is kind of what it became known for, for, like, all the gore and stuff, but it is a movie that has an incredibly unnerving and deep message and concept. It's so much more than that. If it was just torture porn, it'd just be another throwaway piece of shit schlock film, but it's not. <clears throat> Teeth. Teeth was another one of those movies that had such a mystique built up around it. I remember it was during the 360 era, when people were still watching, like, movies and shit from the Xbox dashboard. So you'd see, well, at least I'd see a couple of my friends watching Teeth, and then they'd hype it up like, Man, that was so fucking disturbing, that shit was crazy, you're, you're not ready for Teeth, you can't handle it. And then, like, I never bothered watching it, but then a couple years later, I was like, oh, I remember Teeth. People used to watch that on Xbox Dashboard and said it was, like, crazy. I'll have to check it out. And it was so fucking silly. Like, it seemed like it was self-aware in its silliness. And then there's, like, the uh, gynecologist who's like, Vagina denta! Vagina denta! It was a very cool movie. And then it set itself up for, like, a sequel I don't think ever came. Where she was going to be some kind of vigilante superhero biting wieners off with her vagina teeth. Missed opportunity. It's not too late. They can bring the vagina teeth girl into the Pooniverse. She can fight Winnie the Pooh and Piglet by biting their cocks off. This is, this is a super weird segue. But when I was taking a shit, <laughs> I was closing some old tabs. And sometimes what I do is I write down things that I don't want to forget. <laughs> and this is an older note, but I, I recognized I never talked about it. Uh, I went to a strip club like a little while back and there was there was a stripper there who like during her performance like stopped everything like stopped all movement around her like the other dancers and grabbed one of the dollar bills and, <laughs> and I was like oh she's about to do like some kind of cool magic trick and then she got to the middle of the floor put her legs over her head put the dollar bill on her vagina and shot it out like a rail gun with an air blast. She was like air bending it with, with her pussy. So I wrote down in my tabs, stripper dollar air blast to remind myself of that. Because I wanted to talk about it because I was so fucking impressed with it. I was like, Jesus, the distance on that. And then she went for like round two on it and I was like, fuck. Jesus, she's got a cannon. And Vagina Denta just reminded me of it. <laughs> Did you tip her? <laughs> yeah, Caleb and I were just fucking like throwing ones at her. Do it again! Do it again! That's my favorite trick! Whoa! <laughs> how far did it go? Through the ceiling. I thought she was gonna fucking blast the hole through it. Like, you know how... You remember like in Tom and Jerry when they're spitting watermelon seeds like a, like a, like a minigun? That's what she was doing with dollar bills in her pussy. Well, with a dollar bill. I guess. It wasn't multiple. I, though I guess if she had like started stuffing them, she may have been able to. I think I can do the same thing with my butthole. Not without shitting. I don't think so. It takes so much force and strain, you'd absolutely just poop. That's talent, brother. 